I'm Dwayne Seaver with Real Moment Paint, and today we want to talk to you about floor finishing with pure tongue oil. Even though I, I, I talked about it and said pure tongue oil, what we're really going to do, uh, tongue oil itself is too thick to actually absorb into the wood. So we have a, a ready-made product already called uh, Half and Half, and this is half tongue oil, half citrus solvent. So we have that all ready to go. Um, this, this process for finishing the floor is going to be the same for tongue oil, pure tongue oil or also the uh, dark draw tongue oil. We, and this, that, this would be actually provide a stain finish in one. But I'm not interested in, in having a, uh, this floor any darker than the way it's going to look with the pure tongue oil. So this would be for another project, another day, or somewhere where you want to have a darker, enhance it, uh, a wood with a darker color. You know, um, but not for this one. Anyway, talk about the tools that you need for the project. Um, this is just a uh, nap, just a foam roller. Um, this is how I'm going to apply it. I'm going to be standing up the whole time so you don't have to be on the floor. And we're just going to pour the uh, half and half tongue oil citrus solvent in here and we're going to roll the floor. Also, you might find sometimes you might need a brush. Um, if you have a floor with, with wider cracks, sometimes you have to get a brush into those cracks to get down to the tongue and groove. So, the last thing you're going to need in the very end is you're going to need a bunch of old t shirt material. Um, to be able to wipe the, the floor up, whatever does not soak in, you cannot leave puddles sit on the floor overnight. So you have to wipe them up. So for the half and half, one of the one of the tips I want to give you is if you're doing a small job and you're and you don't want to open the bottle up and you just want to pour it out, then what you do is you just take a screwdriver or an awl in this case and you just punch a little hole in it, and uh, then it'll squeeze out in like a line and be much easier to deal with. You can see that the tongue oil is a, well you might not be able to see it, but it uh, kind of has a yellow amber color to it. Now it will impart some of that color to the floor. Um, so if you're, if you're looking for a water clear finish, this isn't the product for that. You, you have to go with a, an acrylic top coat or something like that. Um, this is the oils do bring out the natural color of wood um, very deeply, and that's why people like the tongue oil. The other great thing about a pure tongue oil finish is the fact that it's easy to maintain. So 10 years down the road from now, or five years or whatever, if you need to retouch up your floor, or even if you have spots in front of your doorways that you need to touch up in six months, you can always take this product and uh, wipe on a thin coat for maintenance. You notice I have the back wall masked off from the, because uh, I don't want to get tongue oil on top of that uh, wood back there. This is pretty generous as far as your uh, oil. And what you're doing here is you're feeding the wood, so you, you just you're gonna just uh, just apply it real liberally. That's what's great about using the sponge roller. It's a sponge roller you can pick it up and move it if you get places that puddle. The other thing you don't have to worry too much about is, is uh, stuff being on the floor. Um, whatever, if there's particles that are stuck on the floor here, or it's a little bit dirty, when you wipe it down with the rag in the end, those things aren't going to stick. You're pretty much going to wipe them up. Now, you see how that, that, that flowed out like that and just kind of pushed forward? That's okay because now we can just take the sponge roller and pick it up again. And that's why I like using a sponge roller, because you can pick up and move the material around. I'm trying not to step in the oil right now as I'm, as I'm doing this, but eventually when we come back to the second coat, we're going to walk all over this floor. And uh, it's no problem as long as you have clean shoes and you're not pushing dirt into the tongue oil. It's not like a, a polymerized or a varnish finish, where varnishes get tacky as they dry. So any kind of dust continues to get stuck in your finish as you're, as you're working it. Um, Tongue oil is not like that. It actually takes about seven to ten days to uh, partially polymerize, and during that time, it's actually beneficial to uh, actually buff it every day, like ice skate over the floor with rags um, for the first couple days to pick up any seepage that might be coming out of the floor, and that'll actually uh, polish the floor up too. 
One thing I want to mention to you is uh, people ask me all the time, well, can I do a part of a floor and can I stop if I want to do half the floor or half the room? Well, if you're going to stop and you want to do the floor, uh, you need to stop at, at an intersection line with the grain of wood like this. this is, that's how you would stop on, on this particular floor. You don't want to stop a cross grain like this on your floor. Because if you go cross grain like this, you'll get, you'll get uh, stains where it doesn't tie in well together. Uh, when you came back and this dries, this will actually migrate over here. And for some reason, the, uh, the tongue wheel doesn't want to uh, look the same. So sometimes you can get like a haloing or shadowing effect when you go across grain like this at a stopping point. So again, you want to stop on a floor, you want to come with the grain as far as stopping. Otherwise, you just need to do the whole room. If you notice, I'm being kind of sloppy with this. I'm not really being real careful. I'm trying, I'm being careful along the edges, but I'm really just laying this stuff down because it's going to drink up the majority of it. So I'm not being real careful about, you know, applying nice even strokes and all that. The tunnel is, is because it's not a varnish, it's going to soak into the floor. And a varnish you would have to be more careful with as far as brush strokes and making it even and keeping it neat and all that. So, um, so I think most people make the tunnel oil in the floor process more complicated than it really is. I want to mention to you the reason why we use citrus solvent with the tunnel wheels because it's all natural, environmentally safe, non-toxic, and actually I don't have to feel like I have to wear a respirator in here because it doesn't leave you dizzy and loopy. Um, not that we still have windows and doors open and you still want to uh, evacuate the air out of the room for about the first two hours um, just to get the, because it's citrus solvent is an oxygen so you don't want to be working in a closed room, you still need air. The citrus solvent smell is going to last probably about Two weeks, it'll still, some, still smell like oranges, and uh, but then that'll slowly dissipate. Um, but you'll still be able to sleep in your house the same night as you're doing these floors. So we're going to do this a couple more times. We'll just keep going back, back and forth over. You can still see it's still laying pretty heavy on here. Once we back our way out of the room, uh, you can walk back over it again, and we're going to walk right back over that corner where we started and roll on another coat. We'll probably get on maybe two or three coats today. And, uh, and then we'll be done for the day. And at that point, you're going to wipe up the excess with this, with that T-shirt material. And that's not the, that's going to, that's going to be down on your hands and knees, you know, or you know, ice skating around with them to pick up any puddles. But give the tunnel wheel about 40 minutes to an hour, at least minimum time to soak in. You can let it sit for an hour or two hours, but give it at least that 40 minute time to soak into the floor. You just don't want to let it, let the puddles sit overnight. Well, here we are, we're back. We've done uh, three coats today on here. You can see we got about 60 or 70 or 80% glossy on the floor, which is what you want to see. Um, at this point, because we're getting towards the end of the day, we're going to do the wipe down process just because of, of, of the time frame and our schedule here today. So all you need is t-shirt material. You can see this is pretty dry, but you can see where the puddles are in here. You know, we want to wipe up, we want to wipe up all those puddles. And everything on here that looks like a puddle. Just clean that up. And we want a nice matte uh, surface on here with no gloss. So wipe up anything that looks glossy on here. And you can you can if you're if you're afraid of leaving footprints in the room, you know, start at the farthest corner and then wipe your way out of the room. And uh, then you won't leave any of your 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 actually your your shoes will actually puddle the wheel. So you don't want to leave those puddles, you want to wipe them up. So um, we're pretty much done here for the day, and tomorrow we might come back and do another coat or two, depending on how, how much the wood looks like it'll absorb. So pretty easy process, really easy to use the half and half tongue oil and citrus solvent. You can see the color that popped out of this floor um, in just a short period of time. So it really gives your, your, your floor a lot of life. So half and half, pure tongue oil and citrus solvent.